Hi there again. Today we're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verses 18 to 22. So as usual, I'll give you a moment to have a read uh, uh, so you can pause the video for that and then we'll uh, have a look at it together. So if you, rem if you remember yesterday, we saw how Paul was keen to explain why he had not been able to come to visit the Corinthians when he had said he would. And he'd said, he, he does not speak, uh, when he speaks, he does not speak with both a yes and a no. Uh, do I say in the same breath, yes, yes, and no, no? He says, no, no, I've always wanted to say, mean what I say, and to say yes. And here in these verses, we find out why he wants to say that, because it's how God is. Uh, he wants to say that God is faithful, and that we can trust what God says. Uh, and so when God says something, he says, when he says he's going to do something, he does it. Uh, I remember a Colin Buchanan song, for those who might know him, uh, talking about God, uh, what he is, he says, and what he says, he'll do. And that's what Paul is saying here. When God says yes, and when God says something, he means it. It is not yes and no. Uh, the gospel message is not both yes and no. It is yes. And in fact, he says, the, the yes which the gospel message is, and you can see this here in verse uh, 19 and 20 is the Lord Jesus. Uh, Jesus is God's yes to us and to our world and to his promises. So look at verse 20. No matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. What Paul is saying here is really something quite amazing. He's saying that all through the Old Testament, God promised all these things to his people Israel and to the world. And Paul is saying all those promises come together and find their fulfillment and find their yes in the Lord Jesus. When God said that he would restore his people, that, that promise was fulfilled. That promise had a yes in the Lord Jesus who died and rose again for us. When God said that the temple would be forever, that promise found its yes in the Lord Jesus. Uh, we can see that in John chapter 2. When God said that he would save his people and restore his people, that promise found its yes in Jesus. All of God's promises find their yes in Jesus. Uh, in the Old Testament, there were various times when you might have wondered, have God's promises failed? Uh, has God forgotten his promise? But Paul here says, no, that's not the case. God was and is always faithful to his promise because of the Lord Jesus. And that's why we can be comforted ourselves. Remember comfort from a couple of days ago? Because God's yes to us is the Lord Jesus. And so uh, he goes on to say, through Jesus, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. The amen, that word amen, it kind of, in a sense, is completion, isn't it? It's what we say at the end of our prayers. But what it really, what it kind of means is we, I agree or truly, uh, truly or I yes, I agree. And so what we're saying there is that as we hear God's yes and we say, yes, we trust in Jesus, who's God's yes to us, we give our agreement that, yes, God has fulfilled all his promises. We know how faithful God is. Isn't it good to know that God is faithful even when we're not? The world sometimes is, and we sometimes are, yes, yes, or no, no. But God is always yes through the Lord Jesus. And what's left for us then is not to do anything. We can't do anything. But what's left for us is to stand firm in Jesus and to trust in him. And what Paul reminds us here is, is that we don't even do the standing firm. Did you see verse 21? Now it's God who made, makes both us and you Stand firm in Christ. Remember, this letter's been written by Paul and Timothy. And Paul says, we stand firm in Christ. You Corinthians stand firm in Christ. We all stand firm in Christ together, not because of what we do, but because God makes us stand firm in him. Sometimes we struggle, don't we? Many of us are struggling being stuck at home. If we're in Sydney, as most of us are, many of us are struggling with various things. And we wonder how we're going to survive. Isn't it good to know that when it comes to the Lord Jesus and it comes to where we are with God, God has us standing firm. Will we stand on our own? No, I know I won't. I don't think you will either. 
but God has us standing firm because of what he's done. God has us standing firm because he's given us, finally in verse 22, his spirit. Uh, God has promised that Jesus will come back and God has given us his spirit as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come, guaranteeing that Jesus will come back, guaranteeing that he'll take us to be with him. He is just so faithful, isn't he? I love that old hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And that kind of sums up these verses here today, isn't it? God is faithful. When he says something, he'll do it. When he makes a promise, he says yes to that promise through the Lord Jesus. And so what's that for us? Be thankful for God's faithfulness. Be thankful for God's son, Jesus. Be thankful for God's spirit, the deposit guaranteeing that he will be with us forever. Be thankful for God's faithfulness and that even though we can't trust ourselves or each other all the time, we can trust God who gives us his son and gives us his spirit. Why don't I pray and give thanks for that now? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Lord Jesus. We thank you that he is your yes to all your promises. We thank you that he, that through him, you uh, promise to save us, to restore us as your people and to take us to be with you forever and to send Jesus back. Uh, Father, we thank you for your spirit. Please, by your power, enable us to stand firm uh, in Jesus and look forward to his return. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Now, this is before I go today. Uh, it's one of the great things about the Bible is the way the Bible as a whole story tells us uh, is focused on Jesus. And we can one of the ways we can see that is actually through this verse, this uh, verse 20 we saw today. One of the things you might be able to do while you're in lockdown is even spend more time in the scriptures. Why not have a, uh, have a go, uh, for those of you who are, who are able to access it, uh, something like the Moore College uh, Correspondence Course, the, what they call the PTC. You can do it all online now. And one of the things that course is really great for is actually helping us to see how the whole Bible fits together as a story about Jesus and and how the whole Bible is God's plan to save the world through Jesus and how all of God's promises find their yes in Jesus. It just is so much, uh, it gives so much joy uh, to me when I'm reading the Bible, I can just see how much it's about Jesus and how much God has always had from before the creation of the world, Jesus in mind. If you'd like to know more about that, uh, pop a comment on the on the Facebook group or send me an email. Get in touch with me, uh, and I'll try and help help you uh, uh, to get uh, get going with that. It'd be a great thing to do, especially if you've got the time now uh, during lockdown. I'll see you tomorrow.